So let's get started. We might be done early. It all starts up front. Offensive linemen. Talents of an offensive lineman, your men mental aspect, what can they handle? You know, how much do you throw at them? How much do you, you don't want to confuse them, right? Yeah, I see someone laughing already. Right? The, per, the, uh, person, the perception of a big offensive lineman used to be slow, kind of not right ahead. Our guys are probably the smartest ones on our field, believe it or not. Our, our grade point average across the line is unbelievable. But we are also very lucky with our, with our mental part of it is that we use the same our youth program, program starting in fifth grade uses the same blocking scheme as we do so it's drilled into their heads at that point but we have a dive blocking scheme and we have a trap blocking scheme and depending on the type of players that we have in that is depends on what type of we lean on more than others versus that size and speed a lot say well size is really not a talent but to me it's a god-given talent all right, you can't, size is important. I mean, it's great to have, so. Um, big and strong, small and quick. Generally with us, we like to have our big and strong uh, linemen sitting at our tackle spots and our small and quick at our guards. We like to pull, we like to bulldoze at the same time, but sometimes we can't do that. Um, our state team, their li the line was all small and quick. I think we had one at 205, everyone else. My center was 145 pounds on that state team. But he, he was a good wrestler. He understood leverage. He understood staying low to the ground, stuff like that. So um, we really needed him to pass block. You know, we knew that he wasn't going to move. I mean, the kid from Amherst that was six, six, 300 pounds, you know, we knew he wasn't going to move him, but we needed to make sure that he could shield him. So it, that modified what we wanted to do based off of that type of, of, of set. And even in our conference, we saw sizes like that. Um, the big and strong type of your linemen. A couple of years ago, 2011, I think we had 250 across the board and strong. And that team, that's all we did was blast. You know, that was our that was the the uh, the style that we ran based off of what we could do with those, those linemen. They could pull. You know, they weren't fast enough to get out there and pull, so everything was generally inside the tackles. Now I see it all the time in, in, in kind of in my conference and some other films that I watch and stuff like that. You see teams that generally try to continue to do things even though they don't have the caliber of athlete to do it. Um, I remember seeing some a team try to pull out a tackle and stuff like that, and he didn't make it all past the defensive end. You know, why do it, right? So uh, use that type of, uh, if he's big and strong, use that type of, uh, to be able to blast and modify your type of offense to run behind him instead of being on that side. Attitude. <laughs> These are always fun. Are they mean? Are they nice? Are they crazy? All right. How many of you have seen all three in, your, in a kit? Yeah, those are the fun ones that you get to have. That you get to have, though. Um, but we will allow, if we know that there's an area of concern, we will change what they do to match that area of concern on, on against the defense. We'll use that type of a crazy kid to be able to beat that defensive person mentally. Right, if we know that that type of uh, has an advantage on something like that, that's a way that you can start to call your plays, you know, use your offense to be able to start to take advantage of that person across the, across the line of scrimmage. So, um, from the list, from what we, what we talked about, what are some of the aspects of, of a lineman that you would see that you would modify your offense around? Anyone? What would you do, or what could you do? I think we, at some point, we were one-handed. Like we only ran the play. We only pulled one guy. We only ran a certain play a certain way. Correct. So because why run it the other way? We know we can't do it the other way. You know. Correct. And, and we see that quite a bit too. I mean, where the conference that we're in is generally smaller in the schools. They have one, maybe two big stud linemen. They run behind. 
you know, you can take advantage of that if, if um, you know, if you don't have a, a defense that will counter that type of a situation. I mean, we see it, so we flop our we flop our defense back to that type of stuff there too. But correct, utilize it. If you got a guard that can pull, you got a guy that can pull. Modify that offense and that adjustment to be able to use him to be able to get on the outside, be able to you know move quicker down the line and stuff like that. Running backs, ground the pound. This used to be what I used to die for. I, I was a big running back fan. I, I coached the running backs, still do for the last 18 years. I had multiple All State running backs. Uh, very excited about it. Now it kind of just now that off, fully offensive like that, it just kind of set aside. But. Uh, the men mental aspects of running backs. Do I want to be hit? You know that changes how you can modify. You can that will change how you look at your offense or what type of a play you call and how you can modify that based off of what they're going, how they're going to run the football. You know if they're not going to, if they don't want to get hit. We had a running back back in 2014. Small guy, quick as lightning. But he hated to get hit. So we modified our offense so everything went outside with him. We never ran inside the tackles. Everything we did inside the tackles was all just a scheme. Do you have the ability to change mid-season what you're doing because of injuries? Absolutely. Um, I did that two years ago, actually, where we lost our fullback. And that is actually where my quarterback this year came in. Um, we lost our fullback, broke his arm during the game. Uh, he was a bulldozer type type style running back. The uh, one that we brought in, he was able to catch the ball. He was able to obviously run the ball, be aggressive, stuff like that. So, so follow up to that, do you practice different schemes going into the season, anticipating that that might happen, or do you have to all of a sudden kind of start over? Is it built in your program? It's built in, uh, usually right here. Is most of it is a, a change in you know my aspect, which is coaching aspect, is one of the slides as well. Is how to you know if I lose him, what do I do then? Do I plug this in here? And now I become this type of it, and it actually happened this year too. I lost my fullback when we played St. Mary Springs, or my halfback when we played St. Mary Springs. Shifted my fullback to my halfback, brought in a bigger fullback on top of it. He couldn't run. Or he couldn't break away from anything. I mean, he was two yards in the cloud of dust, but now my halfback was a more robust. We could blast a lot better. So that kind of changed things from being a speed, quick, trapping, full out, you know, we could do anything to being a little more narrow with that type of stuff. So and hopefully that answered. Um, Size and speed, we kind of just talked about that, where the small and the quick, get them on the outside. Modify your offense and get them on the outside. You'd be able to utilize their uh, quickness to get out get out there and take it as advantage. Uh, the aggressiveness, we're talking about patience, we're talking about bulldozers. Um, again, make that play call towards that type of running or make that offense based off of that type of running. If you have a patient running back that is you know, not as aggressive. A trapping offense or trapping plays, stuff like that, counters, it all works great. Um, but if you got one that likes to hit and wants to run people over, bulldoze it. 